Calcium, the biggest problem with calcium is, is it does not play well with just about everything, phosphorus especially. So you gotta be really careful of the calcium source that you use and what you're trying to mix it with. So uh, a lot of times, you know, a foliar calcium, uh, in my opinion, probably needs to go out either by itself or choose a company that you can actually, you know that it's gonna blend with. Please jar test it, guys. Uh, I've had, I've gone through this, not a fun day for me. Calcium is just so important on many, many different aspects, whether it's keeping the, uh, you know, the strength in the stem, the cell walls, and uh, managing the water through it, and more so for us in the Carolina, especially as Piedmont area, is our soils. So calcium in a, in, a, in a plant's life, it adds to cell wall, you know, cell structure. It adds, you know, some strength, some durability, right? I'm out here in my environment. My calcium levels in my soil are very low and I'm magnesium high, right? On my base saturations. So the problem with calcium is, is it's such a, a, it's, it's such a heavy charge. It basically will tie up a lot of every other thing in, in your soil. In our clay soils that our magnesium is very high. Oh, we have high, naturally high mag soils, and our calcium is low. And what you find is the ground gets very, very hard when you get that scenario, and it's like bricks. Calcium adds porosity to your soil. So I've got more reaction from calcium by adding it to my soil than adding it to my plant. Now, when my plants are deficient in calcium, I can add foliar fertility with calcium, um, and it does help. Um, it's kind of a Band-Aid. It's not, it's, I'm not gonna say it's a Band-Aid for a hatchet wound, but it helps move the needle a little bit. But calcium in soil adds the porosity in the soil, and it will actually not only let more water flow, more infiltration of water go in, it, it can actually hold on to more water and, and help you so you don't dry out so easy. This basically when that calcium to mag ratio gets inverted and your mag's higher than your calcium, your soils are extremely tight and the water runs off more than it does soaking up when you get these big rains. So it's very essential to understand what your calcium level and your magnesium level of your soil is so that you can get that corrected because it's very important in the plant but there's so many things more to calcium that calcium helps do, and corn and soybeans both. If you can feed it into the soil, you can actually change your soil structure. So how I look at it is two different ways. As a farmer, I will need to feed it from the bottom, and I'm gonna try to get some of it pulled up through the roots, up through the plants. So that's how calcium wants to move. And then I try to accommodate the top and try to put a little foliar nutrition of cow and try to meet everybody halfway. So I'm trying to build a better structure. I'm not saying I'm trying, I'm out here on the East Coast, I'm not trying to build a hurricane proof plant, but it does definitely help, especially in soybeans where we have a, a tremendous amount of branching and there's branches break off. This adds some structure to that plant. So it's been a big ch game changer in some of the high yielding soybeans that I've had. And it's been a big game changer in my high yielding corn that we had. We use a lot of gypsum in the soil to build that calcium level as well as sulfur. And then we use what's calcitic lime that we get right off the Atlantic Ocean and uh, South Carolina at Myrtle Beach. We get that lime and it's, it's this really good high calcium source. Um, it helps build the pH of the soil up, which is very important. We always wanna maintain a 6.5 pH that makes all nutrients available, the most available that you can get in that 6.5 range. So don't forget your calcium, look after your soil first. If you're already high in calcium in your soils, then your tissue samples will show you if you're deficient with it in your plants. <laughs>